I think uh, this should have worked. I uh, hope you all see this, um, the initial slide. Um, so the, um, the topic of today's talk is actually uh, about a vision for a fair publisher. But um, I want to start uh, a little more concretely. Um, so to introduce myself first, my name is Kevin Logan. I'm a PhD student and research assistant at the Chair of Fluid Systems at TU Darmstadt. And I'm working on uh, two research topics. One is uh, has a state-funded um, pro research project, Emergent City, where I'm working on uh, water infrastructure in digital cities in cases of emergency. And uh, on the other hand, I'm also working in the DFG funded project, uh, National Research Data Infrastructure for Engineering Sciences or NFDE for ING for short. Within the scope of this latter project, uh, we, are we are founding a journal um, which is called INGRID data management and engineering sciences. And um, I would like in this session to present to you some uh, concepts, ideas we have uh, that we are putting actively putting into practice with the journal already. But I would also like to get some feedback from all of you, um, what your ideas are for um, further developing a scientific publishing um, in the 21st century. Uh, I'll, the the session will be divided up into roughly four parts. I'll briefly present the idea of um, Ingrid, and then I will um, I have prepared a small survey, and then we ca then I'll try to show um, how we are addressing certain issues in the in within Ingrid, and then there will hopefully be some room for discussion. Um, so to start. Ingrid uh, is maybe a bit of a, a strange name, but uh, as the journal is derived from the NFDE for ING, um, the, I think it, it becomes clear why uh, Ingrid is there. Uh, and the next um, point is that it's a journal that uh, treats the subject of FAIR data management and engineering sciences, just uh, in case not everyone is on the same page about FAIR. FAIR is findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable, which are um, principles according to which data should be um, treated or curated to ensure uh, a high formal uh, quality of data. Um, but we don't only want to treat this subject within the journal. The journal itself um, should also actually try to put uh, these principles into practice. I will try to motivate um, from a fairly far distance um, why we need a new journal. So the um, scientific method, uh, according to Galilee, um, consists of um, uh, hypothesis, abstraction, laboratory experiments, verification, and validation. And we think that uh, in the 21st century, we have to extend this. Um, it, the method has been extended in the past already with uh, automated experiments uh, or uh, experiments in silico with um, the von Neumann machine, but also Bayesian inferences become more and more important. And we believe the next step here is really data management, so for fair data for transparency and reproducibility. Where we are with the journal now is that um, the, the consortium NFT for ING was initiated in October 2017, and the proposal was submitted in 2019. And we've now been working on the project for over a year. For the journal, it was launched in uh, September, 20, or officially announced in September 2021. And we're now working on constituting the editorial board and plan to have a call for papers uh, in January of next year, and um, hopefully a first issue in March. The aim of the um, journal is to further scientific discussion on all subjects related to data management. And um, 
it's not only discussion that we want to promote, but also uh, we want to give scientific credit um, where credit is due because so far um, the credit is really only given for publications. Um, and as far as we have found, there are no other journals that um, really treat the subject of data management. So you can have journals that publish data sets, but um, the methods for data management um, don't really play uh, that big a role. Um, the, with the editorial board, we're really um, trying to have, it's mainly a national network within Germany so far, but we're already um, kind of spreading out uh, internationally as well. And um, the journal is also mainly driven by the communities of NFD for Ing, and that is the engineering communities. That's also where our main focus for the addresses of the journal lie. That's uh, the engineering sciences, uh, academic, the engineering sciences in all their diversity, so mechanical, electrical, civil, computational materials, engineering, and here we're not just focused on academia, but also non-academic research, industry, and services should also be considered. But um, since engineering is really embedded in a wider scope of society, we we'll also have to include humanities, economics, and law. And as the main data management infrastructure pro providers, libraries and computing centers play a role. We've found seven topics that we think are really pressing. Um, most important, data literacy is also widely discussed um, and presented here at this um, conference. Um, but there are a few others that also play a role, such as who provides infrastructure for data, how do you govern, uh, how do you find rules for governance of data, business models, in, um, concluding data, ethics also play an important role. Uh, and then, of course, um, just the data sets and data management software, that those are the products of basically data management work in everyday scientific practice. So basically, we have a huge um, we have we have a huge task, and uh, when addressing such a task, it's not uh, always the best to just look at the successful ones. We can also look at unsuccessful ones, such as the Tower of Babel, and we can look at reasons why it failed. For one thing, that uh, it didn't have a realistic goal, uh, reaching the sky with a, a tower, and for another. Um, there was no clear platform, common platform of communication. And um, so we've decided, we've come up with the idea that um, basically 100% fair data and 100% fair data management is not um, reachable. It's more like an asymptotic limit that we're trying to achieve, but we do need a common communication platform. And for us, that is um, what we want to provide with uh, the journal Ingrid. Mm. And now when we look at the building blocks of what we need to reach, to kind of build towards the asymptotic limit, um, we have come up with a few ideas. Um, what building blocks we need to build up the journal from the foundation um, to really uh, reach that goal of a fair um, journal. And um, before I want to go into details here, um, I've prepared a quick survey, and we uh, I'll give you a few minutes to fill it out, and then um, we can then I can present some ideas of how we're addressing this, and then we can maybe discuss your feedback as well.
Okay. Um, I see about half uh, of the participants have responded, um, but um, seems to be going to a close. Um, but I think I'll uh, just continue and try to present some ideas that we're putting into practice with Ingrid. Um, so three building blocks uh, for the infrastructure are mainly the um, uh, a publishing platform for content management and the editing processes that are built on open source software. We are including a preprint server within the journal itself, and we're also uh, going to implement an open review process. Um, to give you an idea how it looks, so um, because Ingrid is mainly driven from two damn shit so far, we um, cooperate closely with the university library here uh, that really promotes open access journals to be founded and uh, within their program two journals. And the library is also um, an active member of the Open Library of Humanities, a charitable organization that promotes open access publishing. And as a measure for this, they have developed the Janeway um, open source publishing platform. And this is a so this is the software that Ingrid runs on. And it's it's open source. It's, it has other principles that really comply with um, the principles of Ingrid as well such as uh, readable code and others. Um, what we're doing with the preprint server is that we're try hoping to make uh, results really clearly visible very quickly. And we also have a functionality to be rolled out, which is community comments. So well, that, uh, as you might know from preprint servers, that uh, community, the, com the scientific community can actually comment on the preprint um, then for the review process, it's actually also interlinked with this preprint server. The referees, uh, it, it is a, a single blind uh, peer review, but the referee comments uh, also get published alongside the community comments and the author comments or the, the responses of the author responses to the referee comments too. So um, this is how we're trying to make the review process really transparent. Um, but also really promote this idea of discussion, um, an open discussion within the community. Then in the second loop is uh, no longer part of the preprint server where the revised manuscript gets submitted. And then we have an article page for the full publication, but we still provide the link to the, um, to the preprint and uh, the co comments so that the, um, so that the genesis of an article really becomes transparent. Um, then an, a few other building blocks are so transparent submissions and linked metadata. Um, generally, when you think of a submission, you have a, a, a manuscript, which is the top triangle here, but, and supplementary materials such as data and software code. Um, so if you're writing an education concept for data management, for instance, you should also provide course materials such as um, software code as an example and example data that can be processed. And then um, the submission becomes really a lot more wholesome. Uh, but we can also turn the tri this uh, triangle and have the um, data as the central submission, which is maybe known from data journals, um, where you have a manuscript submitted as a data descriptor. But uh, here, not so much focus is, has lain on um, software code in the past, which could be used uh, to process the um, the data set, the data in the data set, or analyze it further. And uh, if we think about turning the triangle by another 120 degrees, the software could be actually also considered a central submission, so that we have the um, for instance, a researcher writes a data management tool, um, a software code, um, and could then submit a user manual to the journal and provide example data to be submitted. 
uh, alongside it. Uh, and now, because on the the, the Janeway platform for Ingrid, we um, actually only host the manuscripts, we need uh, links to be provided uh, to the data repositories and software repositories where the material for the supplementary material actually lies. And for this, it's really important um, to have a representation of yeah well the provenance of each of the of the submissions but also um a way of linking manuscripts data and software um together and this is where um we're cooperating again with the library that is thinking of concepts such as knowledge graphs uh for submissions that could be uh, used in the back end of the journal and that's why we also think that metadata is actually can be considered like a fourth entity um, within the transparent submissions. Another key principle is um, open access. Uh, that's where we're hoping to be uh, listed in the directory of open access journals in the future. And um, yeah, to give basically a summary of um, the journal so far is that we're really from the very beginning trying to be guided by open access standards. One way that we think uh, is really important for development is that it should be self-published. So um, the library, the infrastructure provider provide, provides the infrastructure to run the journal, um, but it is owned by, it should be owned by the editorial board. Um, in that way, we, um, don't really have to deal with um, commercial publishers. Um, and the idea there is also to kind of try and avoid uh, very high article processing charges that usually come with um, open access publishing um, with commercial open access publishers. Um, and aside from the open access, uh, something that we think is really important for uh, future development, but we can see it really gaining track uh, all over the publishing community is also this open review idea, um, which we do by making the reviews available and attaching them to the to the publications. And one further idea for us is this this idea, this concept of transparent publications that uh, really see. Uh, publication as whole uh, as being complete only if we provide the relevant code and data and also links to the code and data. Um, with that, actually, um, I kind of want to make a break here for a bit and maybe for the next uh, five minutes, uh, I would try to open the floor maybe. Um, for ideas that uh, members of the audience may have about um, publishing in the future, feedback for our, our concepts. Um, we can also possibly look at uh, some of the results of the quick survey. Um, but yeah, uh, then after maybe five minutes, I would kind of try to give a conclu uh, conclusion of the session. So yeah, don't be shy, just, uh, oh yeah, and also I should mention, um, we can also speak Deutsch, sprechen. Um, also kein problem, uh, falls es einfacher ist. Ich würde nur ergänzen wollen, äh, wer eine Wortmeldung hätte, könnte das hier anmelden und ich kann dann auch die Sprache aufschalten, der Teilnehmer. You can ask for speech, permission to speak, and I can open the microphone for you, if you write it in the chat. Oh, 
flight lens. Uh, ah, I see. Uh, I see two questions. Um, whether we've already implemented the review process in Janeway. Um, actually, not yet. It is being implemented. So um, the Janeway development team, um, they're I, they they have to make some adaptions to the um, to the platform software. Uh, so far, this idea of community comments it was in a preprint software, but not uh, in a journal software. Um, but since they're really a team of eager and active um, software developers, uh, I'm very confident that it will be done um, uh, really well and soon. Um, so the website is is not yet available, and actually, yeah, we haven't had a first um, issue yet. Uh, but yeah, and ob wir den uh, Einsatz von Blockchain Technologie zur Umsetzung verwenden? Um, tatsächlich eher nicht. Uh, was um, gängigerweise um, aus der was wir aus der Bibliothek äh, zurückgeführt bekommen haben, ist, dass da wirklich viel auf Basis von ähm, ja, Knowledge Graphs oder ähm, RDF-Basis gemacht wird, äh, wenn es jetzt darum geht, die, für die Entitäten zu verknüpfen, also ähm, Manuskripte, Daten und Software. Das heißt, man hat XML-Dateien, äh, für die sich die Provenienz mit so gängigen ähm, Provenienz-Ontologien wie ProvO dann äh, abbilden lässt und dafür benutzt man dann diese Datenformate äh, XML oder ähnliches. Genau. Ähm, vielleicht äh, nochmal um die äh, kurze Umfrage aufzugreifen. 50 Prozent der Teilnehmenden haben tatsächlich schon mal einen Datensatz publiziert. Das ist interessant. Und, aber wirklich nur sehr wenige, 12,5 Prozent, ein Softwarepaket. Dann ist etwa geteilte Ansicht, ob man, ja, also, ob man über Datenkompetenz, Data Literacy publizieren würde. Also niemand sagt nein. Also das ist schon mal sehr schön für uns natürlich. Ähm, da hoffen wir wirklich dann auch eine Plattform bieten zu können, wo das geschehen kann. Und es gibt anscheinend zwei Journals, die ähm, sich über Datenkompetenz ähm, oder mit Datenkompetenz beschäftigen. Das ist wirklich auch sehr wertvoll. Vielen Dank für den Hinweis. Ähm, schließlich noch, ähm, genau, was vielleicht so, welch, was wichtig ist in Journals, ist natürlich die Reputation. Das ist klar, ähm, dass es äh, sehr hoch gesehen wird. Das bildet natürlich immer Schwierigkeiten für Journals, die sich gerade in der Gründung befinden. Ähm, aber die meisten geben auch an, dass ziemlich wichtig eben die äh, Empfehlung von Kolleginnen ist. Genau, wir haben uns tatsächlich dann auch für den Namen des Journals mit Engineering Sciences dazu entschieden, die Disziplin aufzunehmen, um etwa die Flughöhe ähm, klar zu machen. Ah, ich sehe hier ist noch eine weitere ähm, Frage. Mm -hmm. um, that's a really important question. Um, I think uh, in this case, it's really a question of intrinsic 
motivation and this aspect of reusability. Um, I think, uh, at least from my own experience, uh, we have, when you generate a data set, uh, of course, you do that with a certain research question in mind. And uh, once you've answered that research question in your own publication, um, then uh, I guess it is the spirit of kind of uh, open science and open access to share the data so that possibly other people can uh, also try to see whether the whether the data that you can provide can be useful for answering other quest other research questions um, but uh, here yeah, it it is quite uh, quite a significant challenge and I guess uh, also something that has to be addressed um, regarding maybe accessibility um, and copyright issues, etc. But um, I guess where science is really a credit-based system as well, um, if you use a, a license that makes the person who reuses the data cite your work, then that only really increases the reputation of a scientist. So I, that would be an idea how um, how we could incentivize publishing of data. Uh, I see that we're drawing to a close of the session, so I'll um, quickly try to give you an idea of what the journal may look like um, when it go when the web page goes online, because it is a purely online published journal. Um, this is basically how uh, the design of the journal is going to look, more or less. We have the uh, logo, of course, but also these elements uh, with the building blocks. And um, when you go from the landing page, you can also, of course, look at the uh, at issues. Um, we can have several uh, titles. Um, the issue title pages can will always look more or less like this, and we can have different topics standards for metadata, special issues in high performance computing, also thinking about open science versus um, data economics, this the question of um, accessibility and monetization, of course. When we look at individual articles, we can have an article page. And on the right here, we can have a download section where we will be able to access the uh, preprint server, the preprint, and the uh, comments. And uh, of course, very highly important is the comment or review box. Since it's a, a, a um, an online journal, um, it's also highly important, of course, that you can read it anywhere. Uh, and this is how it might look on a on a uh, on a phone. So. Um, to try and come to a close, maybe uh, I hope I've tried to make make it clear what um, we believe are important uh, issues that should be addressed in the future for scientific publishing, um, and that uh, we're trying to put some of these address some of these issues and uh, put into practice some ideas and. Um, with the with the journal Ingrid and with that uh, I would like to come to a close. Um, I hope that you'll uh, keep Ingrid and the journal in mind and uh, would be really interested to get some feedback as well. And in case uh, you are some of the people who publish data sets or software uh, and they're not. Um, too fussed uh, about the reputation at the beginning of the journal, it would be really great to get some uh, of your work submitted when the journal finally uh, becomes running at the beginning of next year. With that, uh, I'd like to thank you, conclude the session. 
and uh, wish you a lot of fun at the rest of the University Future Festival. <laughs>